yes people my football here and it's a Saturday so normally I would be either reviewing or previewing an Arsenal game but it's the international break so I've taken this time to go through Arsenal's start to the season, our first seven Premier League games and talking about what we've done so far and what we need to improve on going into the next block of games in the Premier League. So yeah, if you're new around here, if you enjoy Arsenal and football content, please consider subscribing on my road to 700. So yeah, I'm gonna go through blocks of games at a time because I feel like the way our season started, it's gone in stages. So stage one, I'm gonna take the first three games before the international break, which was Brentford, Chelsea and Man City. So yeah, we started with a Brentford loss 2-0, which I thought at the time was awful, like very disappointed. I still do have those feelings now, but it's defo subdued due to the fact that Brentford looked good this season. They've looked very good. They even managed to get a point against Liverpool. They beat West Ham away from home. Look, going to Brentford, it was going to be tough. First game of the season in their brand new stadium, their first time in the Premier League for around 70 years, I heard. They're going to be up for it. Like all the situation, all the circumstances are against us for that game and we happen to lose like it is what it is we didn't put up a good enough fight we didn't we played our fourth string strike in Balogun Lacazette Aubameyang and Eddie Nketiah were all out for whatever reasons illness injury so we had to play our fourth strike of Balogun his Premier League debut going there it was the odds were always stacked up against us that being said we still could have pulled out at least a draw like we did against Brighton but we went away with the loss disappointed considering we conceded two and didn't score a single goal but that's the way it is we then go into the first home game of the season. I'm thinking, look, it's a tough game against Chelsea, but it's our first game back with the fans for a while. The players need to be up for it. And we got blown apart. We got blown away by a better side. Let's be honest, Chelsea are a better side. They're challenging for the top. They're top of the league right now as I'm recording this video. So in hindsight, you can say that as well. Look, were we expecting to beat Chelsea? No, we, we didn't even really part of a fight, which is a bit annoying. But they went on to beat Spurs 3-0. They got a point against Liverpool away from home. So it was to be expected. I'm just disappointed we didn't score a goal again and we kind of just Chelsea just dominated at our place. We then go to Man City. We start the game very well and then concede within eight minutes and capitulate with Xhaka getting a red card and then that game was 5-0 and it was game over. It was damage limitation by the end of it. So we get blown away 5-0 and we end the first international break with zero goals scored, nine goals conceded, zero points, three losses. So awful start for Mikel Arteta and at that point I'm questioning the man's job I'm gonna be real with you I was thinking can he stay at this club because I know the external factors again we're playing against the the champions Man City tough game the champions of Europe Chelsea tough game Brentford in their first game back in the Premier League tough game and we but we lost all three you need to pick up at least at least a point but yeah we come out the international break going to the second stage of games now and it's very much easier set of games the first game Norwich at home you cannot get an easier game in the Premier League let's be real with it you could not get an easier game than Norwich City at home. And we do manage to win. It was 1-0. We were comfortable, but we should have scored more. Only beating Norwich 1-0 is a bit disappointing, let's be honest. I'm expecting 2-3, and we squandered a lot of chances. We then go away to Burnley. Tough game, but we pull out a win. 1-0. So we're getting the results now, but the performance is still not looking convincing. We then go into the North London derby, and this is a big game. Spurs had not been on great form. We'd been on great form. But this is one we need to pull out a performance to get the result. We can't just scrape a 1-0 win like we had in our last two games. And boy, did we pull out a performance. That first half against Spurs, one of the best first halves I've seen Arsenal play. Honestly, it was on level with when we beat Man United 3-0 a few years back, when we beat Liverpool 4-1, when we beat Chelsea 3-0. It was that kind of first half where we just blitzed them. Every single attack looked like we were going to score. And we managed to beat Spurs 3-1 in the end. We conceded late on. But that was, that was what was a performance and a result. That's what we were looking for. Our last two wins had been result, not really performance. That was a performance and we got the result to match it. And then we go into the Brighton game, the seventh one. Three wins in a row, carrying our momentum. We need that fourth win. Somewhat, somehow, some way, we weren't there. Mentally, physically, we just could not compete with Brighton. We get away with a draw. To be fair, we stole a draw from them. We didn't really deserve it. But we got the clean sheet, nil-nil. Didn't concede any goals. And then we go into the next international break with three wins, one draw, and three losses. So yeah, now I'm going to talk about our stats. I looked at PremierLeague.com to look at our stats for this season. And it says, in attack, we scored five goals in our first seven games, which is 0.71 goals per game. Very disappointing, let's be honest. For a club like Arsenal, you need to definitely have a net positive goals to games, definitely. I'm thinking around the 1.7, 1.8 marks, to be honest. We've scored less goals than there have been matches which is really, really poor. Somehow, somewhere, our attacking is just not clicking. Our defence is working, but it's tr the transition is just not good enough. 
and we really need to tighten that up. Shots wise, 92. That's not bad, but then shots on target, 26. Only 26 shots on target compared to 92 shots. That means we've got 28% shooting accuracy. Need to up that, man. Our strikes are not being clinical. We're taking a lot of pop shots from far away rather than having clear cut opportunities. And the most alarming one for me is only four big chances created in seven games. Four big chances in seven games. I mean, I've said it in all the Arsenal reviews, we don't seem to create big chances. We're having shots, but they're all just pop shots or just it falls to us and we take a shot out of nowhere. They're never really clear cut where I'm thinking we have to score. Only four in seven games is really, really disappointing. And to be honest, I think three of them probably came against Spurs. So we're scoring like an Erdgaard free kick saved us against Burnley. Let's not let's get that wrong. Let's not hide away from that. We scored a, a deflected and then a tap in against Norwich. That taking that away is a nil-nil both those games. Spurs we beat, we blew them out the park. And then the other games, we didn't score a single goal in. So only scored in three of seven Premier League games so far, which is very, very disappointing and needs to be fixed. The passing wise, the passing accuracy 81%. It's not bad. I'd prefer around the 85% and more between 85 and 90 would be best. But crosses 96. We know Arteta loves to cross the ball, man. More than 10 crosses a game on average and only 32% accuracy is just not good enough. If you're going to cross the ball, you need to have a target man in the box. And we don't have that. We're not playing to Aubameyang's strengths. If you want to sign in a, a striker in summer or in January that has aerial ability, then you cross the ball. But we haven't got that. We haven't got Olivier Giroud up front. We've got Alexandre Lacazette or Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, which are not good with their heads. Aubameyang is good running in behind. and Lacazette is good with the ball at his feet and uh, playing off people. So we need to alter the tactics or something needs to change because there's no way... Either the, the crossing is either really bad or the heading's bad, but 32% accuracy on crosses, that shows that the crossing is the main issue. But it's also because the movement in terms of Aubameyang, don't get me wrong, he's a great striker, but his movement to find the ball to get on his head is not where it's at. He's not that elite heading striker. So yeah, that needs to be fixed up. Defence-wise, of course, we've conceded 10 goals uh, in seven matches, which is more, it's like a net negative in terms of 1.3 goals conceded per match. But you have to take into account five of those was against Man City with 10 men. Say we lost that game about 2-0, then it would be even. We've done really well defensively. One goal conceded in four games uh, between the last four games in between those two international breaks. The defence has been excellent there. Saves-wise, 18. Not that much in seven games. Only around two per game, which is good. Tackles, 102, but the success rate, 64%. We need to up that man definitely around more than 75, I'd say. Block shots, 23. Inception, 60. Clearances, 143. They're all just stats going down. Errors leading to goal. Only one in seven games, which ain't bad. But we still need to just remove those errors completely. Like I'm, The great teams maybe have three errors leading to goals all season at most. And we've got one in our first seven games already. Discipline-wise, 10 yellow cards and a red card, obviously, Granite Xhaka. So, and 35 fouls. So, we're, we're averaging around five fouls per game, which is... To be honest, normal. But then I look at Man City and these and Pep Guardiola utilizes the fouling excellently, man. He does it excellently. Basically, what he does is when a team breaks, he just cynical fouls them, and he does, and he does it in a way where you don't get yellow. The way his players do it, it's that they like pull you down, but kind of make it so they're attempting to tackle, so the ref doesn't give them a yellow. Just break up the play, stop them getting you on the counter attack, because you know the way Man City play, teams are gonna counter attack against them. So if they can deny them the counter attack, they're sorted basically. And I think Arteta needs to implement that. And he has the tools to implement that, being he has been under Pep and seen Pep Guardiola do this for a few seasons. So there's no reason he can't do it at, at Arsenal. And whether he thinks he can't trust the players to implement it properly or something, but definitely something we need to look into doing. So yeah, that's been our stats so far. Three clean sheets in seven games is good. The goals conceded needs to tighten up and we definitely need to score more goals. So going into the next block of fixture, we've got another nice run of games. We've got Crystal Palace at home and Aston Villa at home as our first two games. Back-to-back -back game at the Emirates. I'm expecting six points, to be honest. I know Aston Villa, tough team to beat. They beat Man United at Old Trafford. And I know Crystal Palace, the whole Vieira thing, and they beat Spurs. But playing at home, I expect performances and results at home you have to pick up points every game i don't care what anyone says away from home yeah you, you get the you get the result the main thing i don't really care about the performance but at home i'm looking for a performance and a result and we really need to pick up form going into the next international break i think this is where we can really thrive now because this would be the time where europe starts to get intense 
all the domestic competition start to get intense. You're fighting on three or four fronts, but Arsenal are only fighting in the Carabao Cup right now because the FA Cup hasn't started and the Premier League and we're swapping our teams out for the Carabao Cup. So we can go all eggs in our basket in the Premier League and start to shoot up this table while the other top teams around us try and uh, get the injuries build up because they're trying to swap in for the Europe, etc. So this is our time now at Arsenal to really go up this Premier League table and really start to excel and build, build the chemistry. The one thing just before I end this video I'm going to touch upon is at once I see consistency with the team selection. Under Unai Emery, under Mikel Arteta, even the end part under Arsene Wenger, I couldn't predict who was going to go in the lineup every week. It was a lottery. Like, who's going to go in? Is it going to be who's starting up front, who's starting midfield, who's starting defensive? I feel like he changed it every week. Now, you can change your tactics before every game. I agree with that because you play against different oppositions. But your team selection should be more or less the same. And for the last four games, we start with the same back four. Ramsdale, Tomiyasu, White, Gabriel and Tierney and we, want, we need to start like that for the rest of the season as long as they stay fit. We need consistency in the back four. How can you get consistency in results? How can you get consistency in performances if you don't have consistency in your selection, in your players? It doesn't make sense. You need to get consistency at results, you need consistency in performances and to get consistency in performances you need consistency all the way from the bottom in terms of the players and the selection. You need consistency throughout the whole process and if one of those pieces aren't right it's the whole the whole thing topples down it's like a house of cards if one of those little um cards ain't placed right the whole thing's falling down so i'm liking that we've got consistency in our team selection so far under Mikel Arteta in the past few games let's maintain that now and hopefully that will build chemistry and help build a consistency in performances and therefore hopefully results so let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on arsenal start to the season so far i got a comment by the footy lens because I put out on my Twitter Dennis underscore Sankar one why football that's the Twitter about Arsenal's start to the season what people are thinking and he responded saying that please based on the last four games which is what I believe as well the start was the worst possible but there are reasons behind it and still a long way to go which I 100% agree with there is a long long way to go this season and being out of Europe it means we have plenty and plenty of time in between matches to get our tactics right focus right a lot of time on the training ground and hopefully we can shoot up this Premier League table. I've been White Football. If you enjoyed this Arsenal related video and if you're looking for more Arsenal and football related content, please consider subscribing on my road to 700. I'll catch you guys in the next video.